And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at Elevenses, which every time I talk about this game to anybody nowadays, they want to know if this game has something to do with Hobbits, and it does not. Instead, this is the card game of Morning Tea. Now, I am all for the differential in theming. I just uh, looked at a game called Bell the Ball, and that's a game about inviting people to a party, and I don't think every game needs to be about slaying orcs or fighting dragons or shooting spaceships. In fact, I welcome various themes. But I will say that this card game of Morning Tea, the theme has zero appeal to me, and even to most. I don't know who is like, well, yes, let's pretend we're having some morning tea. That's not something that most people want to pretend, except maybe some little kids who want to do that. But anyway, this is made by uh, Adventureland Games, and uh, I think that they put out some pretty cool little card games in the past. Is this one of them? Let's see. Okay, the goal of this game is to get the most sugar cubes. You're going to get sugar cubes each round, depending on how many players are playing. There's a little scoring card here. So this shows you that in like in a four or three player game, whoever has the most uh, teaspoons face up on cards in front of them at the end of the round gets two sugar cubes. Second most gets one sugar cube. Now players have 11 cards. They're going to randomly place eight in front of them like this and then they're going to take three into their hand like this. On your turn you have two things. You can take two arrange actions, which is take a card from your hand and place it here. Um, and take the card that was there into your hand. You can do that twice if you would like. Or you can play a face-up card. So let's say, for example, I want to play Biscuits. Now when I play a card, I need to put it in a specific spot. Each player has a reference card. The 1 goes here. The, the, uh, the 10 goes here. 11 is played in the middle of the table. But a 7 is played here. So I play the 7 here, face-up, and then take this card in my hand. Now I have the 8. The 7 is worth 2 teaspoons. At the end of my turn, I'll say 2, so everyone knows how many teaspoons. Because remember, when a round ends, whoever has the most teaspoons gets 2 sugar cubes. Yay! Um, then we have to do whatever the special instructions say on the card. Here, all players pass a card from their kitchen to the right. Kitchen is your hand. Isn't that funny? Okay, so what do the cards do? Number one card, the tea trolley. If you have this one face up in front of you at the beginning of a, at, at the end of a round, and by the way, a round is done by card 11. You can only play this if you have at least four cards. This card can't be stolen in front of you by other people. In fact, I should mention, you can take cards from other people and play them, but you can only play them in the proper position. But anyway, if you have this card face up in front of you, you get a sugar cube, whether you've won or not. Number two, you can pick someone else to turn card two through nine face down. Uh, number three is milk. You can choose a player, look at their hand, and swap one of your cards for one of theirs. Uh, why does cards face up? You can look at all your face down cards. The cups and saucers, you get to take three arrange actions rather than a normal two you can do. Everyone passes a card to the right, left, everyone passes a card to the right. Choose a player, they take a card from your hand without looking at it and return one. That's because this one's worth two spoons. Same one here. Here this one's even worse. They can look at your hand and trade you for a card. And this one you have to show your hand to everyone. And then 11 closes the game. And so that's essentially the game. You're just going to do that after the round is over. Someone will end the round. They have four more face-up cards and play an 11 card. And we go on. There's also a special round where you can, each person gets a special visitor card. And if you happen to have these specific cards face up, you'll get extra spoons for them. First person to do seven cubes, or you can change the amount of cubes if you want a longer or shorter game, is the winner. On first blush, this game is kind of, you just do it. You play a card, and you have to play them to certain positions, and you get cards, and... It doesn't seem like there's much there. On the second look, you'll say, oh, there's actually some strategy. Take cards from other people so they cannot play those cards. Uh, play someone else's card in that spot and hide your own in a different spot so they can't do that. There's some interesting uh, interactions there. But on the third look through, it, the game still just is very blasé. The, the theme does nothing for me. I mean, collecting sugar cubes, that's just not that interesting. And, you know, there's only so many times we can laugh about, would you like a cup of tea? There's really not a lot of 
entertaining theme things that come out of the game. So it's all about just card play. Also, I've played several card games where you're putting cards in front of you and trying to flip them over and get different numbers. Because this one forces you to play cards in very specific positions, very uninteresting. I, I, I tried this because I, I like the games that come from Adventureland games, but this one just didn't do anything for me. The theme doesn't help it at all, and I just felt like I'm putting a card out and doing an action, and each round, each game just felt like, oh, uh, because the cards you start with in your hand, if you can get those cards down pretty quickly and they're high point scoring cards, you can do better than someone else. There's a little bit of luck involved there. And there just isn't enough interesting decisions. You can search your own cards for whatever card you're looking for. You can try to get your one turned face up so that you get that extra sugar cube. But every time I played this, by the time it was over, everyone was so happy that the game had ended. And very few people were very interested in it at all. So I'm not recommending this one. I, I wish I could. I, I don't think it's a necessarily a bad idea, but the game just doesn't have any kind of spark. There's no, oh, hoo. I mean, yeah, there's, you can steal a card from every player's hand and they'll go, oh, I can't believe you took that card. But that's, it's not enough. There's not enough of a bite or an interesting hook in this game. The game doesn't look very interesting. I can't imagine many people walking by and grabbing this because it looks like a fun little game. So it's going to have to live and die on the gameplay alone, and that's not enough for me to say it's worth it. Elevenses. They probably should have went with the Hobbits. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Yeah.